Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to Class of Fridays, where we look at a G.I. Joe classified series figure every Friday. This time we are looking at Beachhead. This figure was part of the Special Missions Cobra Island set, which was exclusive to Target stores. Let's start by taking a look at the packaging. We have the window pane showing the figure and the accessories. We have the Special Missions Cobra Island logo and the G.I. Joe logo classified series. This is Wayne Beachhead Sneedon. Not all of the classified series figures include the file name along with the code name, but the Target exclusive figures seem to be doing that. There is some artwork featuring Beachhead here, and it's not bad. It's not exactly the painted artwork style. It is drawn and looks like it's computer colored in, but this does look pretty good. It shows off the details of the figure. That artwork continues to the side of the box, and on the side of the box in the background, we have a Cobra Terror Drome. This Special Missions Cobra Island series does seem to have the storyline of G. G.I. Joe infiltrating Cobra Island. This figure is number 10 in the classified series, and on the back of the box we have the generic Cobra Island artwork we have seen on other figures in this series. On the other side of the box we have these symbols which represent his specialties. This one means he has the super speed powers of the Flash. This is four boats riding side by side. This means this box is poisonous, so don't eat the box. And this means he hates the letter I, so he is smashing a letter I with a hammer. There is no I in team, and there is no I in Wayne Beachhead Sneedon. Let's pull the figure out of the box and take a look at it. Here is Beachhead out of the box. I will start by saying I do like this figure, but I have a couple issues with it. I don't think those flaws are necessarily fatal, but we'll take a look at it. This six-inch Beachhead action figure is inspired by the original Beachhead figure from 1986. You can see a lot of the design elements have been copied over, and some new ones have been added. Looking at Beachhead's accessories first, he has a beret. It is removable. It is a red beret with a blue and yellow beret flash. As an army ranger, this would have been appropriate in the 80s. The original 1986 figure does not have a comparable accessory, but he does have this red cloth on his left shoulder, which is thought to be his beret. The classified artwork even has that red beret on the shoulder, just like the 86 figure, although the classified figure does not have that detail. Without the beret, classified beachhead looks a lot more like his 19 counterpart. My biggest problem with this beret is it is made out of a hard plastic. You can fit it on the head and you can press it on and it will stay on, but I think this would be better in a softer plastic. I think it would grip the head better. Flint, which was a later classified figure, had his beret in a soft plastic and I think that's an improvement. Next, let's look at Beachhead's main accessory, his assault rifle, and based on the rectangular barrel and the artwork on the card, it looks like this is supposed to be a laser rifle. This classified accessory draws no inspiration from the 86 Beachhead submachine gun. They are not similar at all. This laser assault rifle is a no-frills accessory. It is in green plastic. It has a foregrip and a non-removable magazine. It has a scope and a very short barrel. So they replaced the submachine gun with a fantasy weapon. I can deal with that. That happens, but I don't feel great about the light green color. This green color seems a little weak, and a gray accessory would have at least been a callback to that original submachine gun. This green color is an issue on other accessories and we will get to that. Let's move on to Beachhead's backpack. This backpack is inspired by the 1986 Beachhead backpack. It has basically the same details, but unlike on the 86 Beachhead backpack, which had this molded on crossbow, the classified backpack has that crossbow as removable. The grip of that crossbow will wedge into the slot on the backpack and I believe it's supposed to wedge in farther than this, but on my example, it will just not go in any farther than this. Let's remove that crossbow and take a closer look at it. That crossbow is in the same green color as the assault rifle and it looks pretty good. The original beachhead does not have an accessory like this, but like I said, on his backpack there is a crossbow molded on and not removable. That crossbow will fit in the figure's hand, but that grip is really short. If I were displaying this figure, I would probably just leave it in the backpack. Turning to the backpack itself, it pegs onto the figure through a hole in the vest and the back of the figure itself. It has details on both sides. That backpack is in black plastic. It has this thing on the side. I don't know what that is. It has what may be a scope or a flashlight. There's that slot for the crossbow, of course. There are some bolts for the crossbow, and it has a couple pouches on the other side. This backpack is impressively faithful to that 1986 backpack. This may be my favorite accessory for Beachhead. We are not quite done with accessories.
each head has a pistol and a holster on his right leg that is a green laser pistol. It is the same color green as the other accessories we've looked at. And finally, on his left ankle, he has a green knife in a black sheath, and that knife is removable. So we have all these accessories in the same green color, and I think this is my biggest problem with this figure. That green color does closely match the green on the figure, so I get that, but these accessories would have made a lot more sense in a light gray. Take a look at this 86 figure, and of course we have the light gray submachine gun, but we also have a light gray knife handle on the leg and a light gray pistol handle on the other leg, so those grays could have matched. In addition to that, the crossbow on the backpack, if it were in a gray, would have been a nice subtle contrast to the black of the backpack. What I'm saying is all of these accessories in light gray would have been perfect. Let's take a look at the articulation for classified beachhead. He has the excellent classified articulation we've come to expect, so a great range of motion on the head all the way around, up and down, no obstructions at all. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders, an excellent range of motion at the shoulders, better than most figures. He has a swivel at the upper bicep, he has double jointed elbows, and on the left wrist he has a swivel. On the right wrist he has a swivel and a side-to-side -side hinge. Some fans have mentioned they would prefer an up and down hinge on that right wrist, and I agree with that. An up and down hinge gives you better poses with that rifle. He has a hinge at the rib cage for an ab crunch, but that is obstructed by this vest. He does still have a twist at the waist and a really good leg split, totally unobstructed. You gotta pop his legs back in there sockets when you move them back, but he can move his leg at the hip forward pretty well, not so much back. He has a twist at the thigh cut, he has double jointed knees, he has a twist at the boot cut, and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Moving on to the figure itself, he has that green balaclava mask, which automatically makes him a ninja, right? It's a knit mask with some seam lines. They managed to squeeze some additional details into this mask to give it some additional character. You can see his eyes behind that mask. There is a variation on beachheads. Some beachheads have brown eyes and some have blue eyes. This is the blue-eyed variant. He is wearing a green knit sweater with long sleeves and some pockets on the upper arms, and I like this. It has some nice detail, some seams and cloth folds, and I think it looks really good. He has black gloves with green knuckles, and in case you're wondering, yes, those arms were reused for Alpha Commando Snake Eyes, both the arms and the hands. He has this vest piece over the chest, and that does hinder articulation, but it also adds some depth and dimension to the figure, so I'm glad it's here. It's not intended to be removable, but you probably could remove it with some effort. That is a callback to the tactical vest on the 86 beachhead figure. The details are a bit different. The vest has some magazine pouches on the front, and it has multiple colors. It has brown on the front and the back, and on the right shoulder it has this red and blue communication device that we saw on other early classified figures. The legs of Beachhead are in brown plastic with no camouflage pattern. That's a little disappointing. The 86 figure had lighter brown legs with a green camouflage pattern. I guess the camo was cut for budgetary reasons. There are some additional black plastic pieces on those legs. On the left leg with straps around the leg, and on the right leg there is that pistol holster with with some red paint applications. These are not intended to be removable, but you probably could remove them if you wanted to. He has some standard dark brown combat boots. We have seen these boots on other figures. He has that black knife sheath on the left ankle, and he has some brown and black shin armor. These legs are pretty generic. We have seen these on other classified figures. In fact, yes, we saw those on that Alpha Commando Snake Eyes. There's very little in the way of unique parts on this figure, but there are a few. What really sets this figure apart is the extra pieces. The vest, the holster, and the straps, and the shin armor. That's what really makes this figure look unique. My other problem with this figure is that it's a Target exclusive. Beachhead is a popular character. A lot of fans are going to want this figure, and making it exclusive to a single store means it's going to be harder for some fans to get him. That was my review of G.I. Joe Classified Series Special Mission Cobra Island Target exclusive Wayne Beachhead Sneedon. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking 
sticking with me through another class of Friday. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more G.I. Joe toy reviews. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I can only continue doing these videos with the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. You can get your name in videos. You see the name scrolling on the screen right now? Your name could be there. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with more vintage and classified G.I. Joe toy reviews. I'll see you then, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.